In the meantime, former Republican presidential candidate Dr. Ron Paul says the RNC is getting what it deserves. The party passed a rule in 2012 that he and numerous experts say was done to keep him off the ballot. The GOP's Rule 40B requires candidates to win the support of a majority of delegates from each of eight or more states in order to have their place on the nomination ballot. The previous threshold was five states. With me now on the phone, the man himself, Dr. Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, thanks for joining us. Nice to be with you. So you have said in the past that the RNC changes the rules when it suits them, more or less like almost any governmental organization. <laughs> Do you have some sympathy in this way for Donald Trump, or do you see your situation as completely different? Well, I have sympathy for people following the rules, and sometimes he's following them, and sometimes, sometimes he's a little bit confused about the rules. But um, in a way, it's so confusing that if they go back to the original rule, it actually hurts Trump. And uh, he, he's the outsider right now, so I don't know whether I'd call it sympathy, but I'd sure like to see a, a, a better system because they're just uh, sort of playing games with it. You know what I'm just, just so surprised at? You know, four years ago when this was going on and they were doing this to us, we begged and pleaded to get some coverage. I'm getting so much more coverage now four years too late because it was going on then when the rules were changed. But uh, today it's a bigger deal because the Republicans are on the receiving end and uh, it's getting a lot more attention. So, Dr. Paul, when you were saying, hey, listen, this isn't fair, I have won more states than you're giving me credit for, I mean, what was the response? You felt like there were just crickets? Oh, yeah, there was no response. They just marched on because we didn't quite have the money and the forces uh, to do about it. But there was a lot of uh, discontent. I think it had an effect on the outcome of the election. I mean, it wasn't like that we had a couple dozen people. We knew the system, and we... Uh, we knew the rules. We knew that a lot of these primaries were just uh, straw votes, and that you went for the delegates. You know, I, I had 22 out of 28 delegates in Iowa, but nobody would ever remember I won Iowa. Did, so, did, did anybody from the RNC, out of curiosity, just sit down with you, a kind of gentleman's agreement, and say, listen, we really want Mitt Romney to be the nominee. We think he has a chance. He's the best voice for the party. We hope you understand. Or it was just done, and then you had to react. Yeah, no, there was there was no uh, no contact with anybody that had any authority coming from the uh, uh, Republican Party or for Rom Romney's. I mean, they just it was sort of marched over us. And uh, although we had significant numbers, uh, they knew that uh, they could just change the rules. And we were getting no support, no public support, so there was nobody knew about it except our supporters. Our supporters knew about it, and all you have to do is go and look at some of the films that we had of how strongly they argued our case and fought it. But they were just going to – and you ought to see when Boehner ruled on this change in rule. That is so dramatic. you know. And he was reading from a teleprompter that had what he was supposed to say before the vote was finalized. And you know, it was just that they ran over us roughshod. And, and they had demonstrated, you know, some pictures there where our delegation from Texas, our side, was trying to give it. And one of the elders the delegates came up and just calmly, a woman stood in there, stood in there front and just covered the mic. And uh, of course, what are you going to do? Hit her? <laughs> you know, you right. can't do that. But they, they just did. They closed it out. It was, it was, it's. It, but you I were never shocked. Li I never personally liked at that politics, time. But I, but I like it a lot less now, especially after all that, because I was in into this for very special reasons on trying to spread a message, which I thought we were having a great deal of success for the So the success is measured by votes. So the votes are important for me because it reflects uh, whether they care about the message. Dr. And, Paul, uh, if you feel like being charitable, do you have any words of wisdom for the RNC? Well, and I don't, you don't know have where to I'm not even I'm not even into that. I, I don't really care about partisan politics because I see everybody as one blog, blob, you know, because they all support the things that libertarians like myself don't believe in. Their foreign policies aren't that much different. Hillary, I am convinced Hillary could run as a Republican because she's so <laughs> happy. And, and the people would vote for her. So, no, they're all interventionists. They, you know, uh, right. believe in planned economy. You know, uh, you, you ask, uh, you mentioned this about Trump uh, supporting trade. Uh, tariffs on, yeah. on trades. But I don't even like the WTO supporting the tariffs. I mean, we just put on huge tariffs on China's steel. But it's just the managed, tra tra uh, managed trade that we don't like. We want free trade. 
So I, I consider myself one of the very few in Washington that ever considered free trade instead of managed trade in having the special interests regulate it, uh, you know, to their certain benefits, uh, so because I really believe right. in free trade. So the people have been conditioned, Republicans and Democrats, they believe in managed trade, managed economy, Federal Reserve, managed interest rates. If necessary, take them to negative interest rates that, and, uh, you know, a military force around the world, the empire. It's all there, and very wow. little concern about civil liberties. And, you know, you take Trump and these other people, they're not interested in civil liberties. So this is a real shame as far as I'm concerned. Well, Dr. Paul, we are glad to have you. We are glad to have you here on this program. We want to continue to hear your voice. It is, I would not say unique, but we need it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Dr. Paul with me there.